Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the Frost Tanking Heroic series. This is going to be the first in the series, Heroic TOC. This is how I tank the instance. Just so you guys know, I'm not doing these instances in any particular order. Uh, I'm literally just doing a few heroics a day, a few, uh, a few random dungeons from the Dungeon Finder, and um, whichever one comes out with the least lag, glitches, and mistakes is the one that I do. So today's happens to be Heroic Child of the Champion. When you zone in, you're gonna wanna turn over to the right, and there is a weapon rack there against the wall. You right click on that weapon rack and it puts a lance in your inventory. Right click on that lance and it puts it as your main weapon. And now you go mount up on one of the giant wolves that spawns over here by the wall. And then you talk to the blood elf in the middle of the room, or the arena. And this is going to get the enemy jousters to spawn. What I like to do is I like to target the named jousters and set raid targets on them, skull, cross, and triangle in that order. I have my hotkeys set so that F9, F10, and F11 are those raid markings. And then once they're all marked up, we just start the joust and kill the little lackey guys. Once you're done fighting the weaker jousters, the named mobs will attack you. What I like to do is I like to try and be the first one in so that they focus on me first and that gives me a little bit more control over where the boss mobs go. Try and take them down in the order that you've marked them. Uh, it doesn't really matter what order you mark them in during the jousts because uh, they're all pretty much the same during the joust. But once one goes down, um, no matter if you're a DPS or a tank, make sure if one of the ones who's still riding is following you, make sure you always kind of hover around any of them that are down on the ground. This makes it easier for the rest of your party to take down the mobs while you and the rest of your party can also uh, very easily trample any of them that are on the ground. So following this rule, we just go ahead and take down the rest of the guys. Alright, here's where the real tanking comes into play. Generally, let me go ahead and pause this. Okay, as I was saying. Generally, you're going to want to take down these mobs in the order of the warrior, the rogue, and then the hunter. Uh, but this isn't the only combination that you're going to get, and I'm going to try to make other videos uh, as in the form of short tip videos on how to handle the other combinations. But in this combination, you want the warrior, the rogue, and then the hunter to go down in that order. If you ever get the shaman, whose name is Colossus, he's a Draenei, you always want to make sure he dies first in this group because he serves as a healer. But since we didn't get him, this is the order we're killing them in. Now then. Jalen Eversong, the hunter, the night elf, who's marked as triangle over there on the right, will never move if she doesn't have to. So I throw my death and decay a little bit off to the right in this pool, so that the death and decay and the diseases all hit her while the melee mobs have to come in and attack me. You want to make sure you step back whenever you see Marshall Jacob do his whirlwind, and whenever you see the rogue drop that big uh, puddle of poison, because that can do a lot of damage to your DPS. Marshall will also throw you around sometimes, and you're just going to have to adjust to it and move back into position. Now, um, notice here that I've got the rogue off by herself, and I'm still tanking Jalen with my diseases and turning around and throwing death coil here and there so that the healer doesn't pull aggro. But from here, it's just a matter of taking the mobs down normally. Here's a quick little tip when facing Jalen. Force her to use her disengage ability by charging at her first, and then use death grip to pull her back. If you death grip first, she'll just disengage back to where she was and it'll still be difficult for your party members to attack her. Once you're done with the jousters, um, you talk to the blood elf in the middle of the room and that starts with the next encounter. This could be one of two, uh, two bosses. It's either going to be Confessor Paltris or it's going to be Edric the Pure. I'll do another video on Edric because this time we got Confessor. Notice how I'm marking all the priestesses with the raid markings that I showed you earlier um, so that my party knows to attack them first. The priestesses do a lot of healing so you want to take them down first. I do lose a bit of aggro here um, because I'm, to be honest, I'm playing around with the new rotation. I haven't perfected it yet, but once I do, I'll show you guys. It's really effective usually, um, but in this case, I lost a little control of it. So look forward to that. Target the monk before he dies and use Chains of Ice to hold him still because when he dies, he does this uh, really large AoE slow and it just makes it a pain to get over to the next group. And also, if you Chains of Ice the monk, who, is, who should always be the last one to die. You should go in the order of the Priestess, the Light Wielder, and then the Monk. Most groups already know this, 
Um, but anyway, the monk should be the last one to die. So if you make sure you use Chains of Ice on the monk before he dies and then you get away, you won't be caught up in his slow and the rest of the party will be busy taking down the monk while you're building up threat on the next group, which makes it just even easier to hold the mobs to you. And notice the monk isn't pulling, uh, nobody's pulling aggro from you with the monk either, so it's not like it's any kind of big danger. Once those mobs are down, it's time to fight the Confessor. Tank her like normal, she has very low HP, but when you get her to anywhere below half, she likes to throw the whole party backwards and then she summons up a Nightmare Mob. The Nightmare Mob looks like a previous boss that you've fought before, or that someone in the party has fought before, but don't worry, it doesn't have that boss's abilities, it's just a hard hitting mob with an AoE fear. When I pull the Nightmare, I like to use my Icy Touch and then immediately follow that with a Death Grip, and then I throw the rest of my diseases on it. This, I use the uh, death grip because the death grip forces the mob to attack you for about three or four seconds and so while under the effect of death grip my DPS can go all out while I continue to build threat. So there goes the AoE fear. I don't use Will of the Forsaken because I had high HP when the fear went off but if I was below half I would have used Will of the Forsaken to protect myself and the, until the healer broke out of fear. And so I save Will of the Forsaken and this boss just doesn't happen to do the fear again and we managed to clean up this, uh, clean up the nightmare. It's not a big deal, it's just tank and spank. Once the nightmare is down, then you can go back after Confessor. She's been invincible this whole time, so you don't want to fight her while you're fighting the nightmare. Just ignore her until the nightmare is down, and then you can tank and spank her down as well. Finally, the last boss of the Heroic is the Black Knight. He has three phases. In this first phase, all you have to worry about is keeping aggro on him and that ghoul that he summons up. You can do this with your Death and Decay spell, you can do this with your Diseases, your Howling Blast, whatever. Um, but periodically, the ghoul will change targets, you can't do anything about that. All you can do is taunt him back, or use Death Grip to bring him back. So, once the Black Knight goes down, get away from the ghoul because the ghoul's about to explode. And here, I like to summon up my army of the dead. Because the Black Knight in phase 2 summons an army of the dead of his own. But your army is more than a match for his. Drop a death and decay so that the enemy ghouls all stay within range of you and they're not attacking your party. And your ghouls will make sure that the rest of your party stays safe. And make sure you have the Black Knight targeted and just finish him off by tanking him and keeping threat so that whenever your ghouls die, you have full aggro on him. Finally, phase 3, once you've downed the Black Knight in this phase, begins. And here he's just a ghost, and all of his damage, it, it's a DPS race. He's attacking everybody at once with magic damage. So you should use anti-magic shell, so that you absorb some of that damage up front, relieve some pressure on the healer, and it's easy for your party to take him down after that. Well guys, I hope I was able to give you a good idea on how to tank Heroic TOC. Please keep an eye out for my future videos, as in them I'll be doing smaller tip videos where I'll cover things that I wasn't able to cover here, such as Edric the Pure and the other Jousters, and uh, that will fully round out uh, how to tank TOC. And of course I'll also be uploading other videos of uh, the other Heroics as well in full length videos. Um, I do already have a few of them filmed and I just need to get them edited and uploaded. So until next time guys, go out and have fun. Cheers.